All right, well, welcome everyone. Uh, thanks, Marion. Thanks, We Hustle, for this uh, awesome opportunity, as always. Um, who's heard of Metaverse? <laughs> See, this is the thing, right? Who's heard of Metaverse probably a year ago, before Facebook changed his name? Anybody? Yeah, very few. Because it was actually on a slope towards the whole Metaverse, right? And it's basically being almost demonized these days, right? It's like, oh, you're doing Metaverse, blah, 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 blah. But the thing is, we've all been actually working on Metaverse the entire time, right? So one of the key things that I want to make people understand is that the Metaverse has existed, and it is existing. It's basically the internet, right? It's information all around us. The only difference, and one of the only differences from sort of the human aspect is how do you interact with it, right? Right now, we're on a broadcast. This is a 2D screen. Right, we have phones, we have laptops. This is all 2D, but it's all information, right? And that's the key thing about what the metaverse is. It enhances our understanding of information in a 3D world, whether it's through virtual reality, whether it's through augmented reality, or whether it's through, through eventually Neuralink, where you basically just tap into your brain and you, and you see it, see it, right? And that's the key thing about what the metaverse is. It's internet. All right, plus a bunch of other newer technologies that comes together. So just a brief introduction about myself um, so you understand my background. So I used to work at, uh, I used to work in the video game industry, right, as I'm sure some of us in here, you know, have. Uh, who's, uh, well, we'll get there. So I worked in uh, international publishing divisions, T3 Entertainment, a South Korean company. Uh, they have this huge game called Audition. Um, it's actually a kid's game, sort of like Roblox, except it's DDR, it's like a music game, right? And they had 300 million people playing it. So this is how big gaming is for people who don't understand what gaming uh, industry is all about. And at the same time, uh, later on, I worked at uh, NVIDIA. Right? NVIDIA, everybody probably knows these days since they're worth quite a bit thanks to their GPUs, right? If you're a gamer, you know about GPUs, you know about, oh, NVIDIA versus AMD, you know, who's gonna, who has the best PC that can, you know, score better points or whatever. But the thing is, NVIDIA these days, right, it all starts from the core, the rendering, the 3D aspects, right? When we talk about metaverse, we, I just talked about 3D. How do you experience 3D? You need hardware. You need something that will render it faster because everything's 3D models, right? So at the same time, I don't know if anybody has heard of this company called Flagship Studios, but I'm sure somebody have you've probably heard of this, Activision Blizzard recently being acquired by Microsoft for $68.9 billion. This is the reason why everybody's sort of the whole industry, multiple industries combining together, right? Diablo, anybody heard of Diablo? Okay, I grew up on Diablo. I remember playing Diablo uh, when I was in my parents' home, downstairs in the basement, having these huge PCs to tell all of our friends to come over and play LAN parties, right? That was my first experience of sort of like multiplayer before it was big. And then I decided to join the team that created Diablo. And that's where Flagship Studios earlier you saw. That was the next generation, right, of sort of the Diablo-esque experience. So this is where my background was. And then, uh, we created this game called Hellgate London, right? It didn't do so well, unfortunately, because we tried to do too much, right? We tried to integrate Diablo, which is 2.5D, right? Isometric view with 3D, with MMORPG elements, with blah, 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 everything, right? It was awesome, but at the same time, one of the key things that I did, I was the international producer, right? I produced it to Asia. I worked with, you know, T3, not only T3, Hambitsoft. Hambitsoft's a company who published StarCraft, right? You've probably heard of that game published Warcraft, World of Warcraft. Esports was made because of Blizzard. So here's some photos from back in the day. This is the launch of Hellgate London, right? How Hambisoft spent, I don't know how much money, they never told me, but it was huge, right? It was a whole arena and people were like, oh my God, this is the next big thing. And this was me back in the day, much younger days. You know, I don't look like that anymore, unfortunately. I gained a few pounds here and there. But this is Bill Roper, anybody heard of him before? He was, the, he was a spokesperson of Blizzard, right? Back then, it was actually not Activision Blizzard. It was just Blizzard Entertainment. So I was on stage with Bill Roper and then uh, another colleague of mine, and we launched the game for all of Asia. So 
Why do I talk about that, right? Because these days, it's a combination of different industries. So this, this report came out in September 2021 last year, right? It's a research report, but it talks about all everybody needs to know about the metaverse, right? On technological singularity, it's sort of a scary word, scary statement, and the virtual ecosystem. But the thing is, this is what the metaverse is all about. You have internet, right? You have 5G, you have AI, you have entertainment, you have all of these layers coming together into a whole brand new world. And not just a physical world, I'm talking about virtual worlds, right? And that's the thing about the metaverse. That the metaverse right now, a lot of people think, oh, it's just a virtual game, it's just a game, it's just Roblox. That's just the beginning, guys. That's what I wanna say. So if you look in this report, it actually has Diablo right here, right? Why does it have Diablo? It's because it's one of the first times in the video game space, gaming, entertainment, that crosses with personalization. So anybody who's played Diablo knows about collecting loot, randomized loot, and you wanted to dress up your character to be the strongest, right? Individuality. That's the key. This is the key about the metaverse. Why are kids these days spending a lot of time, a lot more time, not, not, not just COVID, right? They're going into Roblox, they're going into virtual worlds, spending way more time to hang out with their friends. And what do they do? Especially younger generations, they care about how they look. They want to personalize their avatars. So this is the thing, if our kids' generations, or, or, or our generations, right, these days you look at your screen time, it's like, whoa, eight hours per day, six hours, four hours, that's the amount of time that you're connected to the internet through a 2D device. Imagine what can happen if you actually put on AR glasses and you're 100% of the time outside of sleep, connected, and you can see all the information around you. And that's what the metaverse is all about, right? Because ultimately, whether or not it's in a virtual world of the avatar system where you want to spend more money, and this is where a lot of the e-commerce is going. This is why everybody sees entertainment industries colliding with information in IT, right? Because where is the spending power going to be? Right, I play this game, Marvel Strike Force. It's a mobile game. It's the only game I play, I, I have time these days. I spend quite a bit of money in there because it's, you collect, it's a collectible game. But at the same time, I wish that I can bring these characters into other virtual worlds, and maybe the physical world. So that's the thing, right? You know, are the generation Gen Z or Gen Alpha, they will spend their money where their friends are and where everybody else and all the information connected will be. And this is why I'm sure last time you guys talked about NFT, right? It's big. Whether or not, you know, my personal opinions about it, you know, is gonna be the, it's gonna be the next big thing, it doesn't matter. What matters is that people are spending money, whether it's Bitcoin or real money, real money, <laughs> into these ecosystems, right? It doesn't matter because that's where everything's focused on. So this is my, my, my buddy John Radoff, right? He created the seven layers of the metaverse. This was from last year, I believe. So it's constantly changing because metaverse, as we know it, is constantly evolving. So I just wanna quickly go through this. We don't have a lot of time. I can talk about metaverse all day, but basically it starts with the experience. I talked about it. How do you experience information in the metaverse? It's 3D. It's spatial, right? You have to experience it, you have to see it in 3D space, just like the physical world. And then it's about discovery, right? Whether it's ad networks or social elements, right? And we keep going down into the creator economy. I'll get, I don't, I'm not gonna get into that too much, but basically, who creates the content for the metaverse? It's not one single entity or company. And that's the thing that, you know, let's say Meta, Facebook, right? They want to try to control things. That's okay, because they have a huge user base that they can create for their user base, right? And this is why everybody's moving towards that space. But until one day, companies figure out how to change and exchange information between the different metaverses, right? Because there's no such thing as one single metaverse. There's gonna be multiple, multiple, almost infinite metaverses. But then again, how do you connect to the real world? How do you connect to the physical world? And actually, this is one of the things that, uh, that we work on, digital twins and enterprise metaverses. So going down, creator economy, right? One of the key things, just like YouTube, 
the creators are you. It's everybody these days, right? You take a phone and you can basically create content so easily and then you upload it to, for billions to see. And this is the future, right? Roblox, same thing. So spatial computing, this is something else that we focus on. We work with the hardware manufacturers, the experience to wear it on your head, right? At the same time, spatial computing is about where things are actually located, where a 3D object can reside in the physical world, right? We're here today and other people out there, right? If you can see a 3D object when I'm talking, I can put up a, I don't know, a rabbit, an avatar, I can put up anything, right? And even using gestures, I can move it over here. That is the metaverse. But the thing is, right now, I can do that on the 2D world, right? I can, I can pretend and overlay. But for people in the physical world, how do you experience that? And that's through hardware and these ecosystems. So going down, decentralization, right? We talked about you know, edge computing, all of that. It's all a part of the stack of metaverses, right? And then HCI, human computer interaction. This is, this is gonna be key. So what we focus on is spatial, uh, human computer spatial interactions, which I'll get to. And one of the key things is that everything starts with vision. Because we as human beings process information, right? 90% of it is through vision. You see something, right? Immediately you get a sense for it, right? The other senses only account for 10% of our perception of the world. And this is the key thing about human computer spatial interaction. There's data all around us that we cannot see. There's petabytes worth of data right now that's going through all of these wires and, and, and sensors. But we don't care about that, right? And this is the thing about the enterprise metaverse that I work in, that I want people to understand. It's not just gaming, it's not just Roblox, right? It's about how do you connect it to the real world where real people are, right? Physically, we st we're still a physical entity. So for the spatial interactive layer, how do you interact and see and visualize and understand this data around you? And that's the key. So I wanna quickly talk about spatial computing because this is exceptionally important because this is how you experience all of that, right? And because of all the different industries that are, coming, that are coming together or have came together, AI, 5G, IoT, right? This is the thing that's really unique about what we are doing right now as human beings. So one of the key things about spatial computing, there's one more thing that's missing from this list, you know, including AR that I talked about. It's actually human beings. We need human beings to come together, right, all of us, and focus and experience and create these experiences. Because we say, people ask, is it too early? No, it's not. Right, hardware, networks, investment. I mean, I don't know if you know of this, but metaverse investment has surpassed VR investment in China, in the world already, right? So there's so many new opportunities that are forming. Um, what's missing is content. And I talked about this. Who's gonna create the content, right? And what is content, first of all? So it's communication, connections, ideas, and stories, right? Throughout the generations, from one generation to the next, people leave ideas and stories to their, to their, to their, to their children, to their friends. We communicate. Right now I'm communicating ideas through a PowerPoint presentation, right, in 2D format. But we all know that learning, how we learn as human beings, is limited to the amount of experience that we get, right? When you go on vacation, you, you go skydiving, you're never gonna forget that experience. And this is something that metaverse and AR and VR can empower you, empower, empower human beings to learn faster. So, so content is created by humans to connect with other humans. And what about content today? 2D. This is the current internet, right? Biggest franchise movie of all time, it's all 2D, right? This is how people experienced it. Same thing right now in China, right? Social connection, 2D, to communicate with everybody. But why do we talk about rectangles? It's because spatial computing transcends the rectangle. And this is the key thing I want everybody to just absorb and to experience. Because basically, you want to be surrounded, right? In order to do that, we need to wear AR. We need to wear VR, right? VR teleports you to a whole new virtual world. AR augments the virtual world onto your physical world. If I can wear AR glasses right now, I can look at each of you and potentially see your name, right? Then I will never forget it because I'm so bad with names, 
then I can look at the coffee. What's the temperature of it, right? Because there's so many smaller sensors that are actually being embedded to everything that we do. You know, I'm working with a major apparel company right now, and one of their innovation centers houses every single piece of apparel, RFID tags, right? Everything. They know exactly where this piece of you know, shoe or apparel is going to go into the dressing room. How many times, right? Is it somewhere else in the store? How many times have we you know, looked at the, the inventory system, couldn't find it? That's a thing of the past. So, so who will make the spatial content again? It is you. Everybody will be the spatial creators of tomorrow for the metaverse, right? So recently, uh, my company, we launched the Twinverse. The Twinverse, because it's a digital twin of the physical world. We launched it uh, last year. So basically, if we do it for enterprises, enterprise metaverse. We know all the sensors of, let's say, the lights go off. We know exactly where spatially it is. We can augment using AR onto our remote assistants. We can actually spatially, this is my office in Yangpu District, go into my office, click on the IoT, the camera, and then see exactly what is going on. And this is not just in my office, right? Depending on if other enterprises allow us access their information, we can actually access that too. This is my other, other uh, location in Singapore. Right? And by the way, I'll be going to Singapore next week. But uh, unfortunately, right now, I have to physically go. Maybe next couple of years, you know, just fly there virtually. Planet One, Planet O, I don't know if you've been there. We completely digitized our entire place. Made it the first digital twin enterprise, entertainment venue to be a fully digital twin. And basically, we had, we control drones, everything. We control lights, everything over there. We can see every single screen we have access to because they allowed us access to it, right? And that's the thing about the next generation. Everything's connected in the physical world or getting more connected. And this is where we talk about the connection between the physical and digital worlds will present even more opportunities. Right, because previously, the spatial content creator in 2019, right, this is my senior vice president, Mike Hall, you had to hack together all of these devices to experience that right, in a good format. Right? Because everything we know, 3D, you need a 3D engine to render it, right? which we have our own as well. But the thing is, it needs to be fast. Because in VR and AR, if it doesn't render fast, people will throw up. But because now spatial hardware is getting so, so much cheaper, right? It's being democratized, right? HoloLens is still you know, out of reach for most people. But the thing is, at least, especially in China, we have cheaper devices, Unreal, Shadow Creator, right? And then, of course, I see that VR, right? Wearing this bulky headset will be a thing of the past very, very soon. It'll be like the IBM days, right? Of the personal PC, right? Back in the day when I was on BBSs, you know, using you know, 2,400 uh, bald modems connecting to, you know, social media at that point. It wasn't called that, right? Communicating with people. So this is the thing where these, these devices will get lighter, cheaper, faster, right? Everything will come together. Because right now, Qualcomm talked about this as well. Today, and actually we're over here already, you can already tether your devices, right? Your phones, because they're very powerful, to these head-mounted displays. But, and then, wirelessly, right, with Bluetooth or whatever, but basically in the next few years, right, people will no longer be leaving the home with your phones because you'll be experiencing all information all around you on your head. And that's the key thing about the metaverse, right? It's how do you experience the data, the information that surrounds us, right? How does it process information that it sees through computer vision? How does it know that this is, a, this is a coffee or this is a laptop, this is a human being versus a robot, right? And this is where there's so much, so much energy and innovation that's happening right now. Because we all know that Apple is definitely going to release their AR, first generation AR HMD. I'm not gonna call it glasses yet because it's not gonna be a very low cost device. But Apple changed the world with their iPhone, the first iPhone, right? We communicate and we as human beings can access information so much quicker and share so much faster thanks to the smartphone. We, we don't leave home without it. So imagine once we actually can just put on a pair of glasses and experience the world, right? 3D models, navigation, because it spatially understands where you are in the world. It knows exactly how to get to this coffee shop, 
right? It knows how much, like, be before you get there, they can start the coffee machine because it knows exactly what you like. Because the thing is, the evolution of the human species, right? In a way, we were upright once, but now the mobile phone has tethered us, as well as the laptops, to the table, right? So this is a key thing about spatial computing, right? Because we have all sorts of ailments because of these computing devices, these 2D computing devices, right? Carpal tunnel, our neck hurts, right? You go on the subway, everybody's going like this. And I truly believe that very soon, you know, we need to push the boundaries of technology and go back to being humans again because spatial computing is really native to our species, right? This is how we communicate, how I'm communicating right now, right? I can basically show you, move information over here, right? Say, say hey, S-I-R-I, or hey, L, you know, Alexa, right? And then you bring over, say, oh, I want to see the weather. And then you look out there. Instead of seeing rain, I see sunshine, right? There's so many ways to overlay data. And again, a lot of that goes through the visualization aspect, the real-time visualization. So again, you know, this is the key thing about the future. Once hardware catches up to the whole ecosystem, it's going to, again, change humanity as we know it. Right? First, you're going to wear glasses. And then you're going to wear contact lenses. Right? Scary, just like Black Mirror episodes. But it doesn't matter. It's inevitable. Information and actually every single industry is moving towards this direction. And that's the reason why I came out of the video game industry, because I knew that these technologies will change the world in every single industry that humans touch. Great. Thank you so much, everyone.